Hello and welcome to the TCF Morning Show. It is Tuesday, December 10th. We have a full crowd tonight. We got Boomy here, live in person. Uh, you get to see his ugly face a little bit better Lucky than for maybe you, a little bit farther away from the ugly face tonight. Uh, at Boomy TCF, we got Matt at Schools underscore zero one, and we got Pigoy at TCF Pigoy. Um, so we got a lot going on tonight. Uh, but first, we got to start off. Thank you to our sponsors, the Muddy Otter out of the Lake of the Ozark. Um, go to their website, themuddyotter.com. Today, it'll be this morning, they are dropping a new update on the site. Uh, they had a bunch of stuff left over from a thing they did, this, a little event they did this weekend. So they're putting that out. They said if you, if you need a little bit of a, a last-minute um, Christmas presents, they will hopefully get them to you in time. But right here is our beautiful mug. From them, TCF. It's even mug. more lovely in person. Uh, go to their Instagram, TCF, uh, the, the <laughs> Money Otter, or go to their Facebook page. As I said, go check out their uh, website, themoneyotter.com, tomorrow mo- or this morning, uh, and they have a bunch of new stuff for you on there. Uh, but let's get into our first subject here. Monday Night Football, Giants, Eagles. Eli has made his return, 116 and 116. Uh, he's looking pretty good tonight. As of right now, they're up 17-3. to three. He's got two touchdowns. Um, boys, do you think it was a good idea to bring – you think that he is maybe going to – he's got a little magic left in him, or do you think the Eagles just suck? They're 2-10. and 10. What does it matter? Let the guy ride off into the sunset. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but this is literally just a thank you note for all of the, the two Super Bowls and all the winning seasons. God bless him. Ride off into the sunset. Stay at 500 like – the player you've always been. So I put a poll out on the money line Twitter. I said, do you think Eli Manning will start week one next year for an NFL team? Oh, I think question. he will. Yeah, I think he will. Did you say week? Did you say week one for an XFL? <laughs> NFL. They actually just did their, uh, did they just do the release of the jerseys for the XFL. Yeah, that's last getting week. real or that's getting, to be real, I'm I might be on a Mark Trestman Dragons team here. I will, might never, be my squad. I will never cheer for a Mark Trestman team ever again in my whole life. I don't I don't trust the guy. He's a good coach. He's not a good coach. Great coach. He's a Canadian coach. He's a good he's coach a good if Canadian you're the Packers. Coach. Yeah, I, the I, as a Packers fan, I love him, but this isn't I mean, this is just kind of like a like a roadside show gimmick, right, guys? This isn't because he's a better quarterback, right? Uh, who, Eli? What yeah. You, Jones is going to be out for what? Like, said two to four weeks? Is that what I think they said? Oh, uh, okay. Yes. I believe two to four weeks. So, he's going to – he's he's their best option, I mean, with the injury in play. But, I don't know. They're up 17-3. They're obviously he's, they hold on here. He's going to move to a game over 500. So, it's, you know, it's tilted back in the correct direction at that point. I don't know, man. Eli's got a weird career. Two Super Bowls against – you know, probably against the – Probably what was about to be the best team ever, um, you know, at least based on the resume. Uh, you know, beat the Patriots again a second time. Like, that's – but then you look at his mediocre statistically, mediocre, obviously, record-wise. It's nuts. I mean, it's a, he's it's quite a character, really. Is he a Hall of Famer? Yes. He's got to be. I he's got a so. Hall of Fame resume. Uh, they said Eli, Peyton's in the house tonight. Uh, who technically has the better career? I know the stats are on Peyton's side, but two Super Bowls is big. Peyton's got two, though. Oh, he yeah, I Denver. forgot he beat the fucking yeah. Bears. <laughs> How could you forget that? <laughs> I forgot about that. God damn. Yeah, that yeah. sucks. So, I mean, and plus he went to another one, too. But if you, if you, um, I hate to be this way, yeah. but Eli has been on some of the worst offensive line teams that you could, I mean, the poor guy has been beat up the past few years. Yeah. I'm actually surprised he's even still in the league. That's why I think to Pigoy's question, like, will he be on a roster on week one or will he be a starting quarterback? My answer is no. Like, the guy has just been beat to hell his whole career. Like, right off into the sunset, man. Enjoy that money. Like, you've made a ton of money over your career. Enjoy it. You don't have to go be the quarterback for, like, the Jacksonville Jaguars or, you know, the, the Oakland Raiders. Just... Just be done with it. You think you think about it though, and I don't, like, like I said, like his stats 
I, you, know, you know, they are there. And I'm not like a huge like you know stat stats or everything, but he had some damn good receivers there too. And Victor you know, Cruz, Phil Burris there for a long time. Victor Cruz for a OBJ. long time. OBJ, um, obviously OBJ for a good run. Like he, it's not like he didn't have guys that made play. I consistently had good defenses when Coughlin was there. They were always you know had had you know defense. Jason Pierre Paul was you know stud for them. Justin Tuck. You know, they had guys on, on the defensive side of the ball for a long time. Strahan. Yeah. Um, you know, those OCU and Yora. Oh, OC, yeah. Like, they had great teams there for a while. And he had weapons in Tiki Barber. You know, he had other good running backs there for Ron. Brandon I, Jacobs. I, I think that the be more productive than he was in his career during the regular season was definitely there. He got super hot in the playoffs twice, once especially. Like, they rode him. Yeah. The year that they beat the Patriots, when the Patriots were 16 and 0, they rode Eli. Eli was out. He had some insane stats in that Bowl. playoff run. It was nuts what he did there. And like I said, like the 2005 2006 era, you know, that he was a dangerous quarterback. He had the game plan around it, but he wasn't like, I don't know. He, he never like, never really did it like for long stretches. You know what I mean? Like, no, it I, seemed like I don't know. It's just a crazy career. Yeah, it seemed like you would I have would a, take him as a bear, obviously. Don't get me wrong. It's almost like the Falcons team in general. Like, they'll have a good year, and then they'll have, like, two bad years. And then they'll have a good year, and then they'll have, like, two bad years. And they'll have, like, a good game here, and then they'll go and throw three interceptions the next game or something. It's like you can't stay consistent. Yeah, the Bulls well, are down one now. Yeah, of course. We, well, Zach, that, there's, a, there's a reason why Eli's 161 and 161. It's just he finds a way to... You know, water always finds its level, and he'll just – or was it 116, 116? 16, 116, 116. Okay, 116, yeah. Water finds its level, and he'll just – you know, he'll come back to earth, and he'll play well and come back to earth. It's just – But look at that, 60% completion for his career, which is what you want, right about what you expect. Yeah. From like very a, very respectable. A, a respectable. quote, good quarterback. 56,000 yes. yards, you know, solid career over 234 games. It's a good run. Seven, seven yards per attempt. That's a good miles a solid thing. number. It's ten ish. We'll say it's like fifty two hundred. No, that's ten. Eight. Ten. I don't know. Like six miles. Uh, that's way out of what I'm able to do right now. I just did it on the calculator. I don't think I've done math in twenty four years. Yeah, carry, carry the one. Through. I can tell you one sixteen and one sixteen is five hundred. Yeah. Boom. Good in, job on that in one. In sports, in sports math and gamblers math, that's five hundred. <laughs> that's. That's you lose only, a little on the juice, though. That may be the only math I've done well, yeah, in the last obviously. 24 years is like an over-under bet or like a, a second-half over-under bet that I had to like quickly figure what's, out. Math. What's going to be the first state school to add uh, gambler's math as like a, a, an option? You think UNLV you know, would, would do something board. like that? I might go back to school. They should have. Yeah, I would. Gambler's math's a thing, and that's it. Like, can teach you some really damn good skills. You know? Yeah, because that's like real life stuff. You need that. Some of that calculus and algebra <laughs> stuff. You're not gonna use <laughs> that shit. You're gonna you're gonna use the over under the spread. You you gotta figure it out. But let's move on. Like you said, Raptors Bulls. Uh, they it's eighty. They're down one. They had a good lead. No Fred Van Fleet tonight. Uh, the uh, Raptors team that, eh. But this Bulls team, finally the United Center. Is a little, little emptier than usual, and I think that could finally be the reason to push over the edge. But comments came out today from I think it was John Paxson came out and said that he was still on board with the whole Jim Boylan stuff. He talks uh, out of both sides of his mouth so bad that he he believes in the way he's coaching, even though the players do not believe in it. I don't know why the front office would believe in it. So I think this Bulls team, it's just a shit show right now, and I don't think it's going anywhere good. They're the epitome of a shit show. It's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. If you look up shit show in the dictionary, there's a picture of, it's, it's of the, the Chicago Bulls logo right there. Boom. Car packs right there. The, just that, that small gift of them grin. all fist bumping, that's that. I, that's <laughs> the worst. It's like... It's like but it's like Boylan's not the guy. No. And everybody knows that he's not How does the guy. everyone in Chicago, except for Gar Pax, know this? Well, because they're the two biggest idiots in the whole fucking city. So that's probably about what it <laughs> Valid is. Valid point. But then you got the Reinsdorfs who just allow it to happen, and they are loyal to they're too loyal to people, which in this Because end, they sell out the fucking 
fucking largest stadium in the NBA. Yeah, I did so see, what do I they saw care? That, I saw a stat there about... Or I shouldn't say the NBA. In the, in the NHL, they sell it out. But then, because they have part of... They have, they own, Reinsdorf owns the United Center, so the Hawks lease from him. But then... Then you get what you know. How long is their their, their sellout streak? At, you know, in the NBA, they're getting what twenty two thousand a night. Yeah, jammed every time they play at home forty one times a year because they don't play in the fucking playoffs anymore. No. So excuse my language, but <laughs> it's really frustrating it is frustrating. To be a Bulls fan, like it's just they keep kicking the can down the road. It's just I don't know. It's, it's, it's something. It's tiring it's, that's what I think. There's no it's no bright side to it unless you get rid of the coach. Uh, so even the players, like, there's no real leader on this team right now. I understand Zach can go off and win some games, but he's not going to take over every game that you need him to. Laurie has not played up to the ability that we thought he was going to this year. Uh, there's really been no one that's stepped up in a way that's showing you who the big leader is. So, I, it's just, there's, the players aren't there. Uh, I'm watching the game right now. I don't know if it's, I'm watching it a little bit delayed. They're down one with 40 seconds left. We'll see what the, the, their play last night was awful, awful. They don't know how to run like a last second play or anything. Uh, Lori just got blocked um, at the basket. Just a weak attempt against uh, was that Marcus All. It's just it just seems like there's not much fight in this team, and it's because they just don't care about their coach. They don't they don't respect their oh, they're, coach. They're not they're not being they're not being led. No, and he's trying to get in their face sometimes and talk to him on the floor, but there's just no, there's no trust. You can just see it. Well, here's, here's the thing: is I I liken it to the way the Cowboys are led by Jason Garrett, where it's like you know nobody wants Jesus to play for this Christ. guy, but you you know nobody wants to play for this guy, but at the end of the day, it's like well. Here's the hand we're dealt, so let's go out there and we'll just do it, and we'll just You're not figure wrong. out as we go. No, I, it's I, I just can't. Yeah, it's like it's like nobody wants to play for him. The talent on the Bulls roster is clearly it's it's there, but they're not being led and they're not being coached in a direction where they can win. Much like the Cowboys, they're not being led, they're not being coached in the way that they can win, and they just go out there and they just they just kind of whatever it around for sixty minutes a day and just. There it is. Yeah, it's just. Do you guys remember Sanders. like when Vinny Del Negro was coaching? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. The baby, the baby one, bulls. One of his big things, obviously, when him and Sylvie got into it on the radio, was Derrick Rose not playing at the end of games. Like he always had Derrick Rose sitting as a rookie, like at the end of late game situations, and Sylvie called him out on it on the radio. That. Somebody needs to do that with Boylan and Kobe White. Just let oh. Kobe White play. You've got to let this kid develop. You've got to just let him. He's a sink or swim type player. Yeah. You can and tell. you're in a he spot. Experience. What does it matter? He's got some skills. He's not afraid to play in the NBA. He can shoot the three. He's He's got that skill set you want to see in a guy that could be a contributor at the NBA level. Get him on the floor. He needs to be playing 30, 35 minutes a night at this point. You're not going anywhere. You're not going to the playoffs. And that's fine. That's fine. We know what we are. So let your kids develop. Exactly. We don't need to see Chris Dunn anymore. We don't need Satan. We don't need to see Sadoransky anymore. We don't need to see these guys. They're not doing anything. Not Learn doing anything by good. doing. Exactly. It, it, it's bananas when you think about it. Like we've got this kid. He's 21, 20 years old, whatever Kobe White is. And uh, yeah, I'm a Carolina fan, so I've got I'm a little impartial to him. He's shown what you want to see from the number seven pick. Yeah. Got some skills that can, you can utilize. And put you know help put other players in you know positions to succeed and also create a shot and score for himself. What more do you need to see? Let him develop. This is this is insane to me. Like and what is like what is the matter? Well, you don't. You're not going to learn anything by just handcuffing people. We're losing games badly, anyways. Why does yeah. it matter if we throw some guys out there and at least try to like find some find a young team and, and that frankly, is going to? This isn't Phil Jackson. This isn't Phil Jackson in the triangle offense. Right? Yeah. This is just. Jim Boylan in a, in a rudimentary basic NBA offense. It's not like he needs to like sit on the sideline and learn the system to develop it like a quarterback. Yeah, I mean this is come on, this is Jim Boylan here, guys. Yeah, it like, that Jason Garrett uh, comparison made me very sad. Made me very sad. That was so sad. Yeah. spot on, but very sad. Uh, Cubs trade news. You got KB um, on the trade block right now. Wilson Contreras on the trade block right now. Uh, Matt, thoughts? I see you're you're chomping at the bit there. I don't want this taken that I want them to trade Chris Bryant. Dude, I don't want Chris Bryant to not be a Cub. 
But I don't want Chris Bryant in a walk year to not be able to bring back anything. Then walk away for nothing, and you get nothing out of a top five or ten. Especially because that is a devastating scenario. Boris is a very tough guy to deal with. Uh, they're going to want a lot of money. Real and if he's much. willing to go through this whole uh, grievance process, then – you know that he already has a little bit against yeah. the team. He wouldn't just go out there and do it if he was like a super loyal to the Cubs. So, uh, and well, and it tells you free agencies on his mind. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he, if you look at the guys what they're making right now, Garrett Cole's about to get three hundred million dollars, and Bryce Harper just got three hundred million dollars. Machado got three something. I mean, he's looking at those big numbers and. It's hard to blame him. It's though. hard to blame him, but if you look at it, no. If it, if you're a Cub fan, plus he he's two years away from a collective bargaining agreement then, too, yeah. Where the, that that salary is probably going to even go up higher. Yeah. So if you can get it, it, the way I look at it is if it, I'm in the same boat as you, Matt. If you you don't want to make this deal, but you don't want to in two no. years end up looking stupid because you didn't do anything about it when in reality was that you couldn't. You know, you weren't going to keep him in the long run anyway, and then you're standing there, you know, you know, sucking your thumb because you didn't get anything because of it and feeling bad for yourself. So uh, you have to almost, you know, aggressively look at it and, like, what are our realistic expectations? What is he going to want to get paid? And if that's not – that doesn't fit into what you're looking for, then you've got to make some deal happen. And I, the way I look at it, if you can get the right deal, you can get the right uh, players in, in place, then pull the trigger. Yeah, and I mean, it's one of those things. You look at look at what has to be done. I mean, look at the White Sox. The position they're in to start contending now is with two guys that they got by having to deal with Chris Sale in a similar situation. Exactly. They dealt one of the game's best pitchers for a premium price a few years before his contract was about to expire. When they could get, they weren't at a point where they're probably going to be able to win. Their outcomes have obviously proven that they're somewhat on a downward trend, so they need to fix something. Something needs to change. I'm not saying that it needs to be Chris Bryant has to be the one to go. I wish it wasn't. But he's going to bring you the most back. Yeah. He's going to bring you a hell of a lot more back than Ian Happ or Albert Elmora or some of these other guys are just going to bring you. And as a matter of fact, like their their, their system is not is, – is so – underdeveloped right now that they don't have the prospects that they need to really really depleted you know kind of to sustain it how they are right now so it means you're gonna have to get rid of that and someone's gonna have to be you know dealt to bring something back let me throw out a hypothetical for you that i've been thinking about and i don't see why this hasn't really been talked about you send chris bryant to a team that could use a third baseman or could use a guy that could play in a corner outfield position how about the new york yankees yeah I mean, and you got Miguel, Miguel Andujar needs to be traded. Who could plug in at third base for the Cubs? You Glaber Torres, Clint Frazier, Clint 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 Frazier needs to be traded because they don't have another spot in center field for him or anywhere else in the outfield at this point. And they also have his kid, who's nicknamed what I think the Unicorn, the 16 year old, the uh, number one pick out of the uh, MLB international draft last year. That Jason Dominguez. Yeah, he's like 16 years old. They say he's literally like he's like like Trout, the uh, Acuna, that kind of type prospect. Maybe you get a kid like that and say Frazier, or maybe you get a kid like that and Andrew, or Andrew Hart and Frazier, and maybe a pitching prospect. That you can still contend with that, and you just and you just added a you know gold mine prospect. Yeah, I don't hate that it's at the all. The kind man. of thinking that they've just got to consider here, like it, it's not a move. I like Chris Bryant's a phenomenal. Like he's a top five player. Nobody should want to trade him. But there's also a reason Boston's have in a similar situation with Mookie yeah. Betts. Is they got guys like De- Devers that are coming up that are going to need to be paid. They got Alexander Bogarts that's going to get paid. They got, you know, they got all kinds of guys that, you know, their pitching staff is making just boatloads of them. Well, because so I think it's, Baez will be extended by the beginning of the year, so that will be on the books. He, he better be if you're going to trade Brian. Yeah, because I think yeah. that they, they Baez is going to be. Extended. They're ready to put all their chips in on Javi Baez, and it's one of those things. With Bryant and Boris and everything, do you want to put all your chips in on this guy, or do you want to? Tra- At some point, we got to get that farm system back to where it used to be. We don't have a lot yeah, of prospects down there. Yeah, we're going to be back to there. 2012 oh, real yeah, quick. Yeah, we, we we're going to go through all these guys and then realize we don't have much young talent there to bring up. So I think guys like Ian Happ and maybe Albert Almora will be thrown into maybe some other prospect trades, and then Chris Bryant will bring in maybe a nice little prospect with a big name or something like that but for people to sit there and say 
I, I love Chris Bryant. He won us a World Series. He won an MVP. He's won an MVP at almost every level that he has. But at some point, you got to realize that this is a business, and it you gotta you gotta do what's right for the team. And honestly, I think unless you do something stupid where you don't trade for the right guys, which I don't think Theo would ever do, because they understand what his value is. I think that this is a move that unfortunately will be made at some point. Maybe not this winter, but if he if he does uh, lose the grievance and he has two years, I think between now and then he will be uh, not a Chicago Cub, which sucks, but it's going to have to happen. It's, it's definitely not impossible, let me put it that yeah. way. It's not impossible. No, it's, and it's not – and really, it's not stupid either. I understand that people hate to no, say it's it. No, it's not. We don't want it to happen, but it, it's going to have to – it, something's going to have to happen here in the from, next few weeks. From a dollars and cents and a baseball standpoint, it's not stupid. No, especially when Ricketts are saying they're already down money. We, we don't got the money to spend and this and that. If we're going to sign Piaz, we can't be signing a bunch of people to crazy contracts. Especially because he's going to want seven, eight Rick, years. No, I don't yeah. know if you want to throw well, in Singer, seven, eight years on no. a guy like Chris Bryant right now. Search Singer, are we going to extend Rizzo to or what, what's going on with that? I think Rizzo will end up getting like a, to think about him. I think he'll do a team kind of deal. Uh, he may want. He gave you it already. Rizzo already gave you his team discount. He gave it to you. Yeah. I, Rizzo's going to want a big payday, it, dude. If, but maybe he'll go the same way Rizzo with Rizzo. Si- I mean, Rizzo signed early and locked up. Rizzo did them a favor. The best it, hope is that he takes a Jose Abreu type you. deal. But uh, like we were talking with White Sox Dave, he was say, he is super loyal to. David Ross, and if maybe they can form a bond there, maybe point. he can do it again. I don't know, you, and maybe they could maybe back end the contract or something or something like that. I think that I think Rizzo will be around for the long run because I think he's he's super loyal to his team, and like I said, maybe that's why you're starting to look for trades for Chris Bryant because you don't trust it. Let me let me throw one more other little hypothetical out for you too. But you got to keep in mind. I think you guys you guys are spot on with like you know this would be a this would be a problem if there wasn't a punitive luxury tax in that movie. Like the, the, you want to call it a, a soft salary cap, which is really what it is. It's more of a soft cap than, than anything. But it's this is what's the result of it. You, you can't pay everybody. You made a couple of mistakes that you're gonna have to kind of that are coming to roost here. Soon. But you can't do it. You can't trade. You can't trade Bryant, Zach, like you said, um, unless you know for sure you got Baez locked up. Unless you have Baez ready to sign that extension, then you can't, you know. However, I want to also consider maybe you could trade Bryant, and depending on what the situation with the Maya, the, you know, the tech is, do you consider also dealing with Contreras and really loading up your farm system? Because Contreras might bring back as much or more than Bryant, being a catcher. He does not have a lot of miles at his age for a catcher because he was a converted, you know. On a decent contract, and I, yeah, I, I don't hate it. Contract. Again, it's all it's like Chris Bryant. He's it all depends on the deal, and it all depends on what you bring. If you're bringing back, you know, five somewhere between five and ten guys that are, um, you know, not obviously, you know high level prospects but if you're bringing in a, a a trove of guys that you can really build your your triple a and your double a systems around and and have something for the future yeah i i'm not opposed to it well okay if if, if you got this cornerstone with say maybe not quite what the padres have in their system but just maybe a run below that where they have you know like you said four or five you know, top the top seventy five uh, prospects. But right now, they don't have any top hundred. Or bare, I think Amaya might be one. Yeah, uh, and, and Herner, depending on where he falls, depending on the list, Nico still shows up on some of them. But it, I mean, if you get a, a situation where you got cornerstones like Schwarber, Rizzo, Baez, still locked up, you got production in the middle of the order like you need. You need three or four hitters like that. But you got those kind of guys lined up in the middle. And then you still have a you know top-notch farm system ready to you know kind of supplement that here soon. And let's not forget about Nico, like I just brought up too. That's another guy that's – him being ready now is huge. Yeah. If he's go, if he is actually ready, like he kind of showed in September, that is massive. Yes. I think to, if you're able to get the haul that you need for If Brian. he didn't have the end of the year he did, I think that they would have – had a bigger interest in re- doing something with Addison Russell. But when they knew they had Nico, Correct. they said, we're not going to deal with that and we can move on because we understand that we have somebody that can fill a spot. Because without him, I don't know if they they would have been kind of handcuffed in a way or at least go out and get somebody 
but they, at least they can trust this guy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But before we move on, Bulls lost by one on another ugly last-second shot. Just I don't get why. It just pisses me off. Same, Philly scored same too. shit. You know why? I, I, I know why. Why? Because they're they're coached by one of the dumbest idiots in the NBA. That's why. Yeah. But oh, you're, oh, you're dude, not wrong. real quick, the White Sox, uh, looking at Ozuna, I don't think they're going to get Ozuna. Uh, lost out on Wheeler. Um, not looking like they're going to get Cole or Str- Strasburg signed back with the Nationals. Uh, still plenty of other names out there for them. Still though. plenty of other names. I think that they're going to make some moves here in the winter uh, meetings. They are looking like they're in a – they're shooting up. When the Cubs are kind of looking wavy. Trying to find a way to not trying to shoot find down. A, so, I think if you're a White Sox fan, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, Pigoy, I don't know if you got anything to say about the Sox. He's a big White Sox fan. No, I, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's they, have, they have a lot of money to spend, and they, I mean, the future's in front of them. Everything's, everything's in front of like them. They, get- they sign... They signed. They signed a, an all-star catcher. They need a right fielder, and they need pitching. And they got the money to go get it. I, so, hate, I hate to say this, but there you go. Uh, White Sox Dave said they may have the best one-two punch catchers in the league. Yeah, You're probably right. Which sucks. Well, he's he's right. I mean, he's right. It sucks to say, but yeah, I think that McCann and uh, Grandal, especially. I, I like the Grandal though because if you want to take every good player from our division, you can take them all. Yeah, really I'm care. all We're for not that. See you to the World Series. I yeah, would like so. Christian Yelich to get traded to the White Sox. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, yeah, they can have him too. <laughs> Speaking of that, it keeps popping up on my Twitter. These freaking season ticket, they're probably selling them for like ten dollars a pop for the Milwaukee Brewers. I don't get it. Get it off my Twitter. Uh, go sell them at some Subway, like we did. We saw in. Uh, well, you guys did. You guys did the fucking Milwaukee Brewers season ticket tour when you were up there at the Packers training camp and all this. Unbelievable! Other shit. Yeah. You up there. If you bought a, if you bought a sandwich you guys from uh, Subway, ticket free ticket stuffers. Free ticket. Uh, but, Boomy, I don't ask you. Do you have a wacky oh, web story? Oh, I got a wa- wacky web story, but I got a question for you guys first. Oh, wait. Go ahead. All right. Have you guys ever called off of work and then decided? My boss is upstairs, so no. I've never done that. Well, called off of work <laughs> and then decided maybe a couple hours later that you were going to go in and and go to work? Did you ever do that? No. No. Anybody? Nope. Nope. No. Your well, boss might be watching, so probably you. If you if you were feeling better, you would definitely go back. I would too. I'm a lunatic though. But uh, 20 year old Kentarius Gowans of Flowery Branch, Georgia, did. Uh, he called in to his job at Steak and Shake because he was just too damn drunk. Um, hey, hey, we well, hey, we don't fault him for that, right? You, you're intoxicated. Stay home. Uh, but he showed up anyway a couple hours later uh, to rob the place. Uh, he held one of his coworkers oh, oh, and a friend at gunpoint, put a gun to their head, and um, demanded money, and was subsequently arrested. Question: and Did he at least have like a, a mask on? I or something? don't think because so. Because I think they go, "Oh, well, aren't you supposed to be here hey, for your shift?" Oh, I thought you crap. called off. Oh, why? Do you, what? 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 What are you doing with that? Stop! Why? Why are you putting that gun to my head? Maybe he was still drunk. He was, he was probably going to go buy a mask. <laughs> yeah, valid point. Off. But yeah, so he she called off on Thanksgiving because he went out uh, it, too much the night before and had too much of a night. Went to the restaurant that night and held a gun to a coworker's head, and demanded money. Uh, police are saying officers arrived to see employees running from the business, which had customers in it at the time, which is sad. Uh, but he apparently was still drunk. Um, and briefly raised the gun at the officers before dropping it. He was arrested um, and Smart. found that uh, it was a stun gun that uh, during which the stun gun was used. Um, oh, that meant he actually he yeah he actually had a gun, not a stun gun, but oh, they used say. the stun gun to take him down. Goodness um, gracious! And it says it's unclear if Mr. Gowans has a lawyer. I'm going to go out on a branch and just assume he doesn't. I, Did they say what what time this alleged heist happened? It said later that evening. <laughs> so it was in the afternoon. Afternoon well, nighttime. Steak and shake's so. a 24-hour like, well, job. So well, here's the thing. Any, you know, the third shift might not even know it. You know, if he's a first shift guy, the third shift steak and yeah, shake. Steak, 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 steak and shake's 24 hours, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But he's like, those you idiots don't know shoot. me. Let's just take and rob them. them. A little advice. If you cough work, you're feeling drunk, just go to sleep. Sleep it off. Don't. 
do what that guy did. Or if you're going to go back to work and you work at a steak and shake, just get some food. Yeah. Just like suck up the booze, dude. Grab a burger. And, and then if it's still in your low. mind when you're back to being sober and you really want to rob the place, do it then. But I, mean, I bet I guarantee the food will, will bring you out of that. Don't that rob state a place to where you go in there and they say, oh, What's you up, work man? here, don't you? <laughs> we know exactly who you are. We, you are on payroll here. But here's here's my thing. Yeah, I was like, gonna say, is he robbing for his paycheck? Or? <laughs> well, here's uh, my thing I'm gonna like, need all the money in the cash drawer, and also I'm gonna go in the back real quick and grab my pay stub. And it's Black Friday tomorrow too. I need a little. <laughs> yeah, gotta go well, get, that gotta go get those. Gotta get those presents. So he did on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he needed cash, dude. He needed how to much? Get how for much? The, for the next day. How much cash is a steak and shake holding at like one in the morning? On Thanksgiving. Um, you know what I mean? Not like, that much. Guys not go in. Like money at that point. They are not getting the. I'm, I guarantee you, they're not getting more of the steak side of steak and shit. Let's put it that way. That might be the wackiest boomy web story I've heard because what that's a just, human. This one's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a, this is more of the dollar coffee. Give me two eggs, sunny side up type crowd. Just yeah. wild. Like I said, Thanksgiving and steak and shake. Like seven bucks. Imagine Jackson. going to Steak well, and Shake for go... Thanksgiving, and then that happens. You're like, come on. All bets are off if it's Boston Market, but Steak and Shake. Yeah. <laughs> but again, thank you to all all the boys that came on tonight. We got Boomy at Boomy TCF Matt at Schools underscore zero one Pigoy at TCF Pigoy. Uh, it has been the TCF Morning Show Tuesday, December tenth. Again, thank you to our sponsors, The Muddy Otter. Go out there tomorrow uh, or today. They got uh, a new shipment of stuff or a new update on their site. They got a bunch of new stuff for you on there for the holiday season. They said they'll get it to you hopefully before Christmas. So if you uh, – somebody like me who has a last-second shopper and you need some stuff for the family, go on there. Beautiful stuff, pottery, some woodworking stuff there. Uh, again, thank you to Muddy Otter, TheMuddyOtter.com, The Muddy Otter on Facebook and on Instagram. Again, boys, thank you for joining me. The TCF Morning Show, Tuesday, December 10th. We love you all. Peace. See you.